Tuesday, April 2nd, market analysis, Stan Ehrlich, good morning. A few minutes after 10 o'clock California time, <clears throat> I start out with the stock market indexes always, and today's not different. The Spider, the S&P 500, probably the most popular contract for uh, overall market trends and conditions, et cetera, is my major index to analyze and follow. We have overbought conditions relatively recently, not in the last day or two or a week or so, but the last one was March 4th. So it was a month ago. And we have been climbing since, which is unusual because once you typically get into overbought conditions, the market usually tops out within a short period of time and often gives me my favorite price action, which is a bearish engulfing, which we had yesterday in some of the indexes. So I mentioned it at the time. And here we are. We opened sharply lower. We're down 420, 440 at the moment on the spider. Um, this is a new low that we have made today for the last previous seven trading days. So it's a new low for a little over a week. And that's five, you know, trading days, Monday through Friday, usually. So where are we on our way down? Yeah, maybe. Is this a downside breakaway gap from today's high to yesterday's lows? Yeah, maybe. You don't really know until after the fact to some degree. Do we have a double top? Yeah, maybe. Things are starting to fall into place again. Now, I have to admit they did, but didn't pan out correctly during the last couple of months. I've been talking about the market probably to uh, topping out. <clears throat> and usually I got some sort of a minor in retrospect, downside move, and then it turned around and made new highs, which is not out of the question again. But I've got a breakaway gap. I've got a double top. I've got divergences. I've got new lows for seven days now. And we didn't do that when we had small breaks that I thought were going to turn into much larger breaks before. So there's now a little bit more evidence that we are leaving behind for the moment a rally high. Now, I'm not changing into a bear market. I'm not changing into a big, huge, long-term bearish opinion. This is a correction I've been trying to pinpoint for a long time, too long. Uh, and I believe it could be starting again. <clears throat> so where am I going to go with this? My first downside objective is closing this gap here uh, from February 21 to February 22. And that's going to get closed when we come down to about, oh, a little bit, a little bit below 500. That'll be okay. It's about a point or two below that to be more exact. But let's get there in the first place. Now, remember, we're 517 at the moment. So <clears throat> I'm looking for a pretty significant dip here. Um, 17 more points than the four and a third that we are down at the moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. The um, real downside objective, I think, is going to take approximately a month to two months because it's kept climbing since October 13th of last fall, like steadily as heck. This is not normal that we don't see larger and all the corrections we've had since October of last year have been relatively small and very short lived. And when I mean short lived, I mean just a few days. So we, got, we broke some long-term records about the length of this bull move, the size of it, the strength of it, the lack of downside, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't last forever. Enough said. I think I'm going to go down in one to two months from now to about 477. That's the good support. There's a couple other places on the way down that I have to watch carefully. We'll see what happens next chart. <clears throat> That's going to be the one minute chart on the spider for this morning and the last four days. So you can see we wiped out those lows. In fact, that's the high of the day today 
is the low that was made late in the day uh, on the March 26th date. So can I squish this a little bit more? Yeah, I can. There's your new low since one, two, three, four, five, six, seven previous days. So I want to stay here and I want to make new lows lower than today's lows and sooner the better in order to be more convinced that my comments are going to be coming true. A little rally I can allow because gaps are almost always closed. So coming back up to the low of yesterday would be acceptable, although then I don't have a breakaway gap. Let's see what happens. I'm bearish for the moment, for a little while, a few weeks, several. As of now, I hope I'm right. We've got something similar in the E-mini, <clears throat> a bearish engulfing yesterday. That's the clue that we could have had a good move down today, which we have had already. There's still the other half of the day left, and we're not far from the low of the day. So it would be pretty easy, as you can see here, on the one-minute chart for the E-mini. And, okay, let me squish. This is yesterday afternoon's reopening. Sideways until late last night. Started to drop like crazy. Probably some kind of European news. And dropped off this morning, California time, 5.30, much faster. Hit a low. 7.12 a.m. And it has been bouncing a little bit since then. That's not much of a bounce. This is a pretty heavy market today so far. It would not take much to come down and make new lows. Keep going. The QQQ has sort of a double top, but that high was actually made on March 21st for the second high of the two highs in a double top. <clears throat> in the last several days, we have not made a higher high. And this morning, kaboom, we dropped off with a gap. Um, starting this possible double top. The breakout is going to be down at 432 and a half. Then the downside objective, because of that formation, would be approximately down to about 420. That's about right. Then we still have more room, in my opinion. I'm looking for at least 413 and down to maybe 395. I'll leave it at that. That's that's probably going to do the trick again, one or two months. And I think we have started the move down yesterday with some bearish engulfings. Unfortunately, we didn't have overbought conditions and therefore it's not an official ER sell signal, but very close. Next is the QQQ five minute chart. And you can see we gapped down this morning sharply, made new lows for this several previous days. And the breakout of the double top situation would be again at about uh, 432.80 to be a little more precise. Next chart is gonna be the NASDAQ, June futures contract. <clears throat> Outside trading range day yesterday, possible double top also with the high just like the Qs on March 21. But now all of a sudden it looks like it could come true because we're breaking into new low ground since the double top started. And we seem to be staying down there. We're not coming back too well. So again, staying where we are or going down any amount more just makes it look a little more bearish a little more quickly. The official breakout on the NASDAQ June futures contract is gonna be at 18,000, give or take a little. And that's going below the low on March 15th. <clears throat> that's going to be uh, convincing a lot of people that the market has turned down somewhat. My downside objective is it going to be in the neighborhood of 1730, excuse me, 17300. Yeah, that's about right. Next chart. And this is the five minute NASDAQ futures contract. Again, our bounces so far fairly feeble. Next chart. Russell 2000. Not quite as good of a double pop, a double top. Some people might call it that. I'm not ready to agree completely, but it looks close. 
Yes, we have new lows <clears throat> for about the last seven days again. But we want to see a downside breakout, which is always going below the low between the two highs. That's your breakout. So it's going to take us a few days probably to have that breakout, in which case I'll refer back to yesterday's commentary. Uh, I told you so, routine. Anyway, the one minute on the Russell, big down gap, new lows, seven days, looking like the rest of them. They're all falling into place. Bonds and tenure notes. Bonds have made a new low this morning for months. The last time bonds relative to today's low was, to equal it was back on December 4th. That's a new low for four months, a third of a year. That's quite a substantial amount of time. I'm not going to call that a double top. I'm just going to say it seems to be starting or started past tense, a downward slanting channel, which is fine with me. I made reference to it, I believe, yesterday and <clears throat> getting down to the bottom of the channel in several days to a week or two. It may take longer than that would be just fine with me. So it's going to be in the ballpark of uh, uh, 115, 14, 13, maybe even a little bit below 13 and a few to several weeks from now. Ten your notes. <coughs> New lows today for exactly the same amount of three, four months. Right now, we're staying below previous lows. That's good. Ten-year notes are a little more sensitive than 30-year long bonds. No surprise that it's diving a little faster, quicker. So same kind of commentary, looking for more of a downside here. But I'm not talking about a bear market. I do not expect it to come anywhere near close to the lows that we had <coughs> for this previous bear market, uh, which were in approximately October. So again, this double top formation in 10-year notes creates a downside hypothetical objective around 109. Right now, we're 109.23. So frankly, maybe a little bit below 109, but not much in a few weeks, implying we're going to be going sideways a lot, but with a little bit of a downward slant in the interest rate futures in general until finally we see conviction come to the market about rates actually going down. And of course, then the market will, bonds and notes will have already started to rally. Next, <clears throat> uh, the short-term five-minute chart on the 10-year notes. So they dropped off very sharply earlier. And here we are making new lows for quite a while, months, in the last few hours. Crude oil. Heating oil, unleaded gas. Well, crude oil is a new high ground again. Broke above resistance yesterday, stayed there yesterday and the day before, Friday, Monday, and today, Tuesday. And it's sort of like official. All of today's price action is a new high ground for a while. None of the resistance areas stopped the market for very long. I caught some turning points during the way up. Uh, both buy and sell. But this trend is perpetuating. With a little gap up this morning, we will probably come down to the high of yesterday and then turn around and go back up again. We are, we are again overbought as of today, right now, and therefore a little susceptible to a dip or maybe even something more important than that, but I don't see it at the moment. The dip is going to come down to close the gap. I just said that. So it's a it's a nice combination. Slightly overbought and a small gap to close. A little bit lower are perfect. It's not going to change the trend. So minor dip next couple of days this week and then turn up again. I don't like saying that because, you know, I don't like paying more at the pump like everybody else. Next, heating oil. Also uh, a strong day, but nowhere near the recent high only a week or two ago. So we have more or less a sideways market here that's trying to develop a longer term trend. And I don't know very decisively what that is yet. So I'm going to have to pass on an opinion here on heating oil. I'm kind of neutral at the moment. Next, <clears throat> natural gas. New lows for the move just a couple of days ago. 
bear trend, lower highs over time, lower lows over the same time, which is several months. That defines a bear trend. We've only been up for a couple of days here. No big deal. They're not even that big. Yeah, good rallies, but there's more resistance above the market than there is support below the market. And that spells bearish. So maybe we'll pop up to about 2.004. And there's a chance we could come up to 2.116 uh, or rather 2.162. But I don't expect too much more of a rally. A few days, a week, maybe a hair longer, and then down. So I'm modestly friendly short term, but basically bearish. Next, gold. This sucker doesn't want to stop moving up. And it's getting overbought again. We still have that resistance. I'm sorry, sorry, that divergence situation <coughs> developing, which means new high in the actual price, but the indicator has not been making higher highs. And as a result, you have a divergence, no new high in the indicator, but new high in price. That is one tool out of many that people look at to come up with some sort of bearish commentary. And I do the same thing. So I don't like to see these divergences. They imply something's brewing on the other in the other direction. So being overbought for two days, all I have to have is a bearish engulfing. And all of a sudden I'll scream bloody murder. The market's turning around and starting to head down like this one right here. And that was back on December 4th. And it dropped for a week. Could have been a lot longer, but at least, you know, a week and a pretty sizable break. And the same thing happened a little while earlier. And then for a bottom, it's oversold combination with a bullish engulfing. And then over here, you have the same thing as well. So gold has been great with these signals uh, for 2023. But I've yet to get some really good signals in the first three months of this year. So we'll see what happens. It's prime target. We're a bearish engulfing, and all of a sudden that will create a very important to me sell signal. Silver. Overbought for the first time today for a couple of weeks. <clears throat> the last time we were up here, it did this. Giant bearish engulfing in overbought conditions produced a modest break for four days. And I'm surprised it wasn't bigger and longer lasting. We now have another new high for the trend, another sharp up day. So now my little break is over. It was okay, wasn't great. Didn't have any buy signals at the bottom. My stop took me out. I always, always, always have a trailing stop. You can call them stop losses. I like to use the phrase protective stop. It's the same thing. And they should move either very quickly for a scalper or periodically, which means intraday and maybe every day, every few days for a swing trader and for an investor slower, but still lock in less risk and eventually a profit and then eventually more profit over whatever time period you're thinking about. That could be a scalp, same technique, just moves a lot faster. An investor type of long-term protective stop, it may not move for a month. I'm thinking silver could form a double top, but we're way up here right now. I have to go all the way back down to lower than yesterday's low in order to get another signal like we had on March 21st, which was only a week and a half ago, and it did it then. Why wouldn't it do it today? Maybe. It just doesn't look like it at the moment. Platinum. Higher high for a week and a half or so. Trend is obviously sideways to down. Actually, I'm going to call it between a rock and a hard spot, like I've probably said here for the last week or so. We could rally up to the resistance like we did back here on March 15th. So it's going to bounce back and forth until I can get a longer term opinion. Um, I'm sort of friendly for the moment. Minor new highs. Nothing stopping it for a little while, a little bit of a rally. And we just now started to come back up out of a support area. So I got to give me a little bit friendly here. Next chart, high-grade copper. 
I analyzed this in yesterday's bars closing uh, show for Ninja Trader with Michael Burke, an old friend of mine for decades. Uh, this looks like it's going to continue to move up because it broke through resistance, came back into support, and is now poking its head back out of support area on a rally. So I could justify a move all the way back up to about 4.3 uh, because of a head and shoulder bottom formation. Now, this is not your usual head and shoulder at all. But tell me I'm wrong. We've got a low back here on May of a year ago, almost exactly a year ago. We rallied some fiddled around, came down, and made a lower low. It lasted three weeks or so, and it was decisively lower than the low way back in May, and that was during the month of October. Then the market went up, made a high. That was on January, uh, December 27th, December 27th. It wasn't quite as high as the previous high, but it did establish a line. We're now calling a neckline. This one line right here, and it's downward slanted, which is typical for head and shoulder bottoms, or also called an inverted head and shoulder. Same name, same pattern, doesn't matter. Now it's critically important that the decline not go too close to the head of the formation. And two other things. It should be, could be, oftentimes is about the same price level as the first shoulder low, which it did bottom out. Plus, there's the symmetrical aspect to head and shoulder patterns. The distance from the average of the head or the lowest low, take either one, to the first shoulder is a number of days or a, a amount of time. Hours, minutes, days, weeks, months, whatever. That amount of time is going to be approximately the same from the bottom of the formation to the right hand shoulder which it was not, but, and it was about a month and a half, something like that, earlier than expected, forecasted. And I didn't forecast it because I didn't see it until yesterday. But it's not too far off. The symmetry is not perfect most of the time to begin with. It's just approximately symmetrical, pretty close. Closer the better. Then it started to go up after November, uh, February 9th, and the line that we drew for the neckline was broken with a very big, sharp rally up. That's classic for a breakout. And that was on March 13th. It went to and through a resistance area in one day and kept on going for a few more days. Great breakout, right out of a textbook. Then you should have a correction, maybe halfway back down to the neckline. It could also touch the neckline all the way but usually it's between halfway back down or touching the neckline somewhere in there, which it did. And that was right around the corner last week, March 27th. And here we are starting to go back up again, which is perfect. Out of a support area, rallying. This head and shoulder bottom so far looks very good. The only thing is the timing for the last shoulder, which is acceptable. I also want to point out something else to you guys. <clears throat> the shoulder, the first one and the last one in the head are classic. But sometimes they have, they have um, symmetrical parts in the pattern that you normally don't see. Look at this low and then that low a little bit lower. They correspond to that low and that low. So between the shoulder and the head, you've got two other lows. Between the head and the last shoulder, you've got two other lows. Wow. You've got two extra parts on both sides that normally don't exist. Symmetry. So my upside objective, because the head and shoulder bottom is going to be 4.3835, give or take a little. And it's right up to where it was back in January of 23, well over a year ago, year, a year and three months ago. Next chart is the um, daily data for the 10 year notes. Uh, soybeans, I'm sorry, I was looking at the notes. The 
soybeans are low and last at the moment, about to make another new low. And you've only heard me talk bearish for grains, except with a minor bullish commentary here and there for months. And I'm going to continue to do that. I don't see any major bottom yet. There's a few chances for something to develop, but it's not progressed enough to mention it. I think soybeans and mostly the other grains can challenge the lowest low they've seen only in the last couple of months or less. So I'm bearish. And if you look at soybean uh, oil, it's got the same longer term bearish picture. I think it's going to come down to support and probably break the lows for many months. Soybean meal, same comment, except the support is a little bit more substantial. We did bottom out uh, in February where it did bottom out last June. So that could turn into a very broad double bottom, but it's got to go a long, long way up to break out of this double bottom. And I just don't see that yet. We're new lows now for about a month today, right now, and very close to those other important lows I think are going to be broken, and that's going to cause another wave down. Corn. I'm sorry, same kind of commentary across the board in grain, and we'll look at wheat in a moment. New lows in corn, heading south. Next, wheat. Did that a month ago, new lows, and it's bounced for a few weeks up to resistance level. Basically stopped a little higher than I thought. And now we're starting to make minor new lows for a couple of days, but wait a few hours. Wait a couple of days. Probably by the end of the week, we're going to see it make new lows for a couple of weeks or more. Can't help it. Looking for lower levels across the board and grain. Here's the wheat. In the last few minutes, it's nosedived into new lows. And it's challenging the lows made a couple of days ago. And that's the detailed chart for the wheat, which I just showed you a moment ago uh, <clears throat> in a, a daily data format. So this is the same thing, but at least it's uh, one minute. Here we go. Cattle. Yesterday, kaboom, stampede to the downside. And today we have an inside trading range day. Doji, doesn't mean too much. <laughs> Did get oversold and has been for the last five days. I should therefore expect a bounce, a rally, probably just back up to resistance again, around 180, <clears throat> and then down again. So because of the oversold condition for a few days, I think it's going to rally or bounce very soon, a modest amount. I'd rather sell it short after the rally than try to buy it here for a little bit of a bounce. Next, hogs. Very much between a rock and a hard spot. And this essentially started in early February, mid-February. So, month and a half. <clears throat> Today, Doji could come up to the resistance and stop and come back down. I could also see it come back down to the support and go back up. We're between a rock and a hard spot. Not much else to say at the moment. Sorry, no major opinion here. But you got to go back to the likelihood that this is a potential strong situation because the trend, you know, since November and December's bottoming out process has been up and that's quite a while. So I favor slightly the strength into resistance. Next, I'm going to have to switch to trade station in order to look at the ice markets. Um, I understand they have raised their rates for data feed outrageously, in my opinion, um, period. So we have problems with the vendor I'm using in order to get ice quotes because they refuse to forward them on. Um, and I agree. But Trade Station is giving me real-time quotes instead of Ninja. And here we go. Up to and including today, the uh, OJ on the ice exchange in New York seems to have broken out of a pennant formation to the upside. This little dip down to the top of the pennant's not unusual, but it has to stop at today's lows, which is just about perfect, and start to go back up again, making new highs for about um, um, a month and a week or two would be real good. And I think it could happen in the next few days. 
if it's going to perpetuate an uptrend. But here we are down ticking and low and last essentially. That's the best I can say for the moment. I'm not real positive about this. This still looks a little iffy. I'd like a little more con uh, conviction. We've got cocoa. And it's got a doji. An incredible overbought situation because of a problem with the cocoa crop. And I hate to say that because I do like my chocolate. And it's going to get a lot more expensive. Probably double in price. And the whole process started way back, uh, essentially, uh, October of 23, last fall. And it's been in a bull market ever since. Right now, it looks like it's in the latter stages of a parabolic move. So maybe there's not too much more time to the parabolic move. But the upside could be sharp rally highs to come, maybe. A parabolic move means that the end of the swing up is extremely steep, and then it just dies all of a sudden. I'll try to call that point when it dies all of a sudden and starts to head south for quite a while as best I can. Coffee. Ah, a classic bullish breakout on the pennant. So it's being dragged along with cocoa. Unfortunately, I like both, my co cocoa and my coffee. So, ouch. Uh, there goes Starbucks. So um, <clears throat> new highs for quite a while, challenging the previous top. This is how a double top could form, but it's not yet. Both of these tops could be, we haven't turned down yet, in overbought conditions. Classic. Uh, but the fact that we spent a lot of time sideways in a pennant before this rally today kind of implies it's going to scream into new high ground completely. So I'm not saying sell it. I'm saying watch carefully if it can stay here and during the next few days go into new top, new high ground and stay there above, well, pretty much exactly above 201 or 200. And we're very close. Next is sugar. Eh, neutral. Looks like maybe a reversal in progress. Probably going to dip down a little bit. Lastly, cotton the rag. Slightly bearish. Well, actually a little more than that. The head and shoulder top in cotton is working just fine. It broke out to the downside on March 14th. I'm looking for lower levels below 90 and a third real soon. Could be today. But this week, probably. Again, my minimum downside objective is 82.80. We call it 82.90. Under 83, whatever. And uh, uh, unleaded ga gasoline. Right up there near the previous highs. Uh, maybe the bridge accident has something to do with this. I don't know. I'm a technician, not a fundamentalist. But making new highs and almost a new high ground for the trend Breaking bear trend lines, I'm, I'm slightly friendly. That's it for today. Thanks very much. Manana.